Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Real Results with Coach Joe. I'm your host, Coach Joe Villegas. This is the program where we help you to improve your health, increase your wealth, and live a more filling life. And with me today, I've got my friend, Coach Brett Knopf. Coach, how are we doing? We are doing well, Dude, I'm, pump, I'm pumped that you're here. We've got two coaches hanging out. This is great. <laughs> so, so Brett comes to us, Coach Brett comes to us as a performance coach and a business strategist. And you've got a lot to share with us today, and I know this is gonna be awesome for our viewers to check out because we're gonna help them get the morning routine down, kind of get their life in order, and just make everything better. That's the idea. So I'm excited to get started, <laughs> this will be great. So Brett, why don't you kick us off, uh, just so people understand your background and how you got into coaching in the first place. Fill us in, like how did you get to where you are today? Sure, so uh, like a lot of coaches, grew up really involved in sports, mm -hmm. uh, just been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. Yeah. Father, uh, you know, regrettably was a jet season ticket holder, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. been a not so fruitful existence. <laughs> but you know, we're ideally on the upward trend. Right, uh, right, right. That being said, uh, I spent 20 years in leadership mm -hmm. and sales management positions, yep. mostly in W two roles, uh, primarily in hospitality, marketing, and health and wellness yes. uh, with Equinox for 13 years. Right. And as a result, uh, you know, I found that a lot of the the skills and strategies that are inherent in these other roles were highly transferable into my own business with yes. companies and, and leaders and sales teams, uh, let alone the individual performer. So, uh, you know, I segued into my own business about nine months ago now. I had formed the LLC two years ago, coming up in May, and yeah. uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving, loving life and uh, yeah, really man. enjoying being able to Get the uh, get the information, knowledge, confidence out to people, uh, absent of that corporate oversight. For sure, and it's cool because your like your background is so eclectic. Like I feel like a lot of people kind of stay in one lane. Like oh, they're just in health and wellness or fitness, or they're just in sales, or they're just in corporate marketing, whatever. You have this like really cool blend, and like we spoke about this a little bit, but I'm sure you can elaborate. Is you pull tools from so many different areas to make your own like system and how you work with people. So can you talk to us a little bit about that, like what you've kind of brought about over the years to make your system a little more unique? Sure. So it, it's funny you say that. I, I actually just did an interview where I was telling my entire story for the first time. <laughs> and it was with this gentleman, Jimmy Noose, and he runs a company called Moving Forward Small Business. Mm -hmm. And he's like, where's the yeah, where's right. where's the linearity with with any of this if linearity is a, a word it is now I mean, yeah, you perfect it. trademark <laughs> yeah. yeah write that down You're right uh, so no it, it's really the the throughput has been i got to watch my father growing up mm -hmm. and he owned his own business party rental business in patterson new jersey okay. and i saw how people responded to him his his mm -hmm. team members because he was the first person i saw actually executing on servant leadership way before I knew what servant wow. leadership was. Very cool. So, you know, him genuinely caring about his team members, him, you know, taking uh, an active role in getting in the trenches with them right. was something that carried over for me into my first, you know, quote unquote, real job. I've been working since I'm 14, but yeah. post college, where I was at Tavern on the Green, and that was at the time the highest grocer, uh, highest grossing restaurant in the country, highest volume restaurant wow. in the country. And it was a unionized business. Right. So me coming in there, trying to tell these 15, 20, 25 year tenured unionized employees no what to do, not a chance that in happened. hell yeah, it would right, happen. Right, right, right. So I got in the trenches with them. I showed them through my actions that I would never ask them to do anything that I wasn't willing to do myself. And mm -hmm. I'd say that style of leadership uh, has, has carried through into everything else I've done, right, right. where now my mission is really to equip leaders and, uh, and teams with the skills and the systems so that they can create environments where employees actually want to be there. They yeah. want to be putting their best foot forward because these leaders are invested in them on a personal development level, right. not just, you know, 
produce, 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 level. produce, produce, produce. For sure. No, and I love that. And I think that that is a sign of true leadership. It's like you can get in, you can be the example, show them how it's done, but not in a condescending way, right? It's no, like, hey, never. come walk with me as, as I show you this and we do it together. So I think it's fantastic. And truthfully, I think it's probably only one of the real like viable ways to lead anybody. Like who's gonna believe you if you're not willing to do it yourself, right? I don't think, uh, I've never done it other ways. I've right. certainly been <laughs> involved right. with other people that sure. have done it other ways. <laughs> and I say it all the time to you know, the people that I consult with and coach mm -hmm. is, you know, at the end of the day, these guys will willfully do the opposite of what's in their best interest right. just to spite you because you aren't treating them like a, a valuable human being right. first and foremost. Right, for sure, and, it, and it's all it's people to people. Right, it's just the people helping people. So we gotta make sure we're keeping that human aspect of it or else we're, we're in trouble. So um, what I would love to do is learn more about, you talk about the skills that you coach people through when it comes to leadership and being able to, I, I guess we connect with the folks that you're working with and that sort of deal. Like, can you talk to us a little, a little bit about that? Like those, that skill set that you teach? Yeah, by all means. So again, it's, it's leading with interest in, in other human beings. And that mm -hmm. goes from the outset of what you're trying to accomplish from a recruiting and, and hiring standpoint. Yeah. So I coach these guys to look at your top performers from a productivity standpoint okay. and what characteristics and, and things they do well, mm -hmm. but also from a culture and, and team, mm -hmm. uh, team value standpoint, right. what characteristics do they uh, apply or you know, have inherently. Right. And when you're interviewing and you're recruiting, tailor your interview questions and your recruiting through that specific lens so you can put people on your team at the outset right. that fit the characteristics or can at least uh, showcase enough where you know you can coach them up to the level right. of your top performers in right. those areas. So if you don't do that, you're shooting yourself in the foot right from the start. Companies waste so much time, money, resources, energy, mm -hmm. just getting the wrong people in the wrong seats right. uh, from the outset. So get it right from the outset, you're gonna save yourself a yeah, lot of heartache no doubt. On, on the back end of trying to undo uh, things that, or you know, trying to get people to do things that they weren't equipped to do from the outset and you could have identified that early and often. Right, right. Now I know we're kind of going like the, the business route a little bit, we'll come back to performance coaching in a minute, and I wanna kind of keep going with this, with this thread. So, uh, you know, for folks watching, besides my mom, um, <laughs> the, you know, there's other small business owners, entrepreneurs, things that watch this show. For, for someone who's running a small business or they, maybe they're a solopreneur, what are some of the things like skills or you know, strategies you might want to cover with someone like that to make sure they're being effective in their role? Because maybe in a way they're leading just themselves, yeah. right? So what are some things, and this might kind of bring us back to the performance coaching yeah, well. piece, but, but let's kind of start there in terms of like, if you were to sit down like with me, right, as, a, as an entrepreneur, like where do we begin? How do we even begin to you know, start this journey together? So in order to lead others effectively, you have to lead yourself mm -hmm. first and foremost. So a lot of this comes down to understanding yourself and really taking time every single day mm -hmm. to analyze and reflect and strategize on what you're doing well, where you've got areas of opportunity right. for improvement mm -hmm. and how you're going to attack the individual actions in your daily calendar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we spoke about this previously, but the the starting point for me is, number one, you've got to clearly identify your, your goals and your, your values. You yes. know, why are these goals important to you? Much like health and wellness, yeah. you know, you need to have a very clear understanding, otherwise you're taking this zigzagging right. approach and you're unlikely to ever get there, certainly not in a linear and, and efficient manner. Yeah. So you know, the goal setting and the values, then we can create the strategic plans as far as what do you need to put in your calendar on a day-to-day -day basis right. that is going to funnel directly into your short, intermediate, and long-term uh, objectives. Gotcha. Um, and then, again, we've, we've discussed this, but here's, here's to me where people miss the ball. I mean, they miss the ball on the, the first couple of things we, yeah, we just yeah, yeah. spoke about, but taking time at the end of the day and becoming a student of your calendar. Mm, like so that. you sit there and you've got your calendar out in front of you, mm -hmm. all right? Then you've got a pen and paper. I'm, you know, there's something to be said I about like that old fashioned. Yeah, yeah, it just, yeah. It, it, it reinforces these things. Mm -hmm. the, there's just yeah, more, more tangibility to it. So you sit there and you've got your calendar mm -hmm. and you start writing down your productive actions for the day and your productive actions for the day right. are defined as actions that then directly funnel into your 
goals and objectives, mm -hmm. or they're on the personal development side of things. Okay. So education and skill right. development, meditation, gratitude, uh, exercise, mm -hmm. you know, things that are fundamentally beneficial for you that are productive and lead to greater productivity in the work uh, right. side of things. Gotcha. So productive actions for the day, then go into, you know, what went well, what didn't go well, and you know, when confronted with the similar or same action tomorrow or in the future, mm -hmm. how will I leverage those successes for additional success? Right. How will I address the opportunities uh, for improvement? And, and that can be anything, you know, you know eye contact. That could be yeah, yeah. something like, you know, I needed to learn more about uh, you know, sales, right. whatever, whatever the case may be. Gotcha. You give yourself the opportunity to course correct in as close to real time as possible yep. by objectively evaluating yourselves. Because when you can lead yourself and see those things yourself, first mm -hmm. and foremost, you're gonna be able to do the same for your team, for right. your employees, and where people miss the mark is they take this overgeneralized approach to team building okay. when it has to be really nuanced and specific to the individual, again, similar to fitness. Right. You can go on, have a generalized fitness plan and make some progress, or you can have a very customized, bio-specific yep. game plan and you know strategically uh, progress day to day, session to session. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I think, you know, taking the time, like I said, to reflect, and I love how you put it, it's like you're learning from yourself. So like you can learn from the positive and you can learn from the things that maybe weren't so positive and where you can course correct, like you said, and make those tiny adjustments, like those micro adjustments to keep you on the right trajectory. Now, for somebody watching this, they might say, well, Coach Brett, I don't have the time to do that, which is, we heard that too many times. But what do you tell folks? Like what, what is the impact of not doing this? When they say, I don't have time, it's like, okay, well, here's what you're missing out on. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. So anxiety, you know, people feel this, this acute anxiety and, mm -hmm. and overwhelm because they, they really truly believe and they feel that they don't have time for everything. And because they're not students of their calendar, mm -hmm. they're double booking or they're forgetting things yeah. or you know that's, that's just going to lead to that you know, panic, frenzied state. So right. when people tell me they don't have the time, I show them my calendar. Yeah. And it is you know, just jam packed with, with actions. Right. And yeah, you, know, it, you can say you don't have the time, mm -hmm. but when you're writing these things down, you realize that oh wow, there's an opportunity to prioritize the things that are important. And the things right. that are important are the two things I mentioned. Those that are productive from a personal development standpoint, they're gonna give you the uh, education and right. energy and mental clarity to execute in the other productive actions, mm -hmm. which are you know, within your business and, and your day-to-day -day right. job execution, whether you're an entrepreneur or you know, really any, any role. For sure. You know, and just, intentionality. Intentionality yeah. is a word I use all the time. Love you that. can either be a passenger in your own life or mm -hmm. an extra in, in, in your in own movie, movie yeah, yeah, yeah. or you can be the director and the star of your movie by actually taking inventory of what you're doing, why you're doing it, and what the results are. Mm -hmm. So you can intentionally make the adjustments that you see fit. Definitely, and I feel like a lot of people are just sort of like floating through life. Right, and just they are. along for the ride. Myself but, included for a long time. Yeah, no doubt, same. Like I was, I was plugged into the matrix for a long time. <laughs> but being able to say, take a step back and reflect on, hey, here's what I did, here's why, maybe why I did it, and here's how I can do better every day. Like I, I think that is such a powerful way to make leaps and bounds, probably in a shorter time than, than most people think, right? We probably, versus like, oh, I check in once a week or once a month. Like you might be able to compress the time to reach that goal. Like well beyond what it would be otherwise. So I think that's a great tactic. Now, I'm gonna press pause, we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we're gonna to continue to go through some more of this peak performance stuff. So we'll uh, be back after we hear from our sponsors. What makes a Wawa Club? Is it the crispy bacon on the turkey BLT? The endless layers of flavor of the buffalo chicken salad? Or is it a secret handshake? Nah. At Wawa, there's a club for everyone. Find yours today. We ride for those who died. The Police Unity Tour and RVN Television is bringing to you a show called On Your Honor, Straight Talk. And I'm your host, Patrick Monturi. I am a retired police chief from Florham Park, New Jersey. And I am also retired from the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C. 
I am currently, for the last 27 years, the CEO and founder of the Police Unity Tour. And this show will bring to you straight talk about law enforcement, the actions and heroism that is provided to you, the citizens of the United States, as well as their actions in falling in the line of duty as we could see some of the stories that surround that. Again, please watch us on RVN television and be safe, take care. At Jersey Mike's, they slice your order fresh, right in front of you. And let me tell you, watching that can send a rush of emotions through a person. Excitement, impatience, baby-like wonder, indecisive, anticipatory chewing, nervous pacing, happy claps, and finally, jealousy, because that's this guy's sub. I should order one. Mm, good idea. Sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Welcome back to Real Results with Coach Joe. I'm your host, Coach Joe Villegas, and today with me I've got Coach Brett, and we just left off talking about the value in using the end of your day to reflect on ways you can improve, uh, you know, working towards your goals, whether it be personal development, like we said, or just like your general goals that you have for yourself. What I want to do, Brett, is I want to kind of jump to the front of the day now, and how can people sort of begin to build that front bookend, if you will, and, and start their day off strong? I know you've got a whole system, so let's, let's hop right into it, let's hear about it, and let's get that out to the viewers so they can start using it as well. Yeah, by all means. So I, I want to start with the disclaimer of this has been developed mm -hmm. over a long, long period of time. All right. So where I'm at now is certainly not reflective of where people are or should be, could be. I don't even like using those words. Sure. Yeah, silly, silly words. Let's, let's eliminate them from the vocabulary. No doubt. But, you know, I, I realized that, you know, I love studying success mm -hmm. and I love studying success habits. Success yeah. leaves clues. So over time of, of doing this, I started to create this construct that I call my six by six. Mm -hmm. And my six by six is comprised of gratitude, meditation, mm -hmm. cold shower, mm -hmm. exercise, journaling, mm -hmm. and education. Okay. So when I start my day, the objective is to get five out of those six done okay. before I even start my quote unquote work day. Gotcha. Uh, the, the sixth is the journaling, which we've already touched on. I leave mm -hmm. for the end of the day because yeah. I want to take inventory and set mm -hmm. up tomorrow. Gotcha. So six by six is, you know, wake up and say thank you. It's like, yeah, right, damn, right. you know, I, I'm happy to be alive yeah, today. What a great way to start the day, really, you know? Yeah, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big religion guy, but I, I'm, mm -hmm. I do believe in, in spirituality sure. and, you know, forces way beyond what uh, we as, you know, human beings are, right, right, are capable right. of. So you know, I want to I just say thank you and start the day through that lens because where, where you have gratitude, mm -hmm. that eliminates the ability to have angst and yes. uh, you know, just Fear any of the negative the emotions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's really challenging, if possible at all, right. to have that when you're, you're feeling grateful for, for things. Totally. So that's one. Then I go to meditation. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to look at my phone. I don't want to think about anything. I want to start the day fresh with just a blank mind. And, you know, meditation is, is challenging for me. My brain is just yeah, constantly going. Sure. Sleep challenges the whole nine yeah. because of that. So it's a, it's a practice. It's, it's def I think, categorized as a practice, yes. meditation. So just keep doing it, keep doing it. And ideally one day, you know, I'll uh, be sitting on top of yeah, the mountain. Like floating in there, yeah. I'll, I'll come <laughs> find you. Yeah, right. It's a long-term goal here. Right, right. Um, so do that. And then immediately after the you know, 15, 20 minutes of meditation, mm -hmm. I've recorded myself uh, stating my goals oh, uh, awesome. to myself. So okay. I clear my mind, and then I start just beating into my subconscious. Right. What am I here for? What am wow. I trying to accomplish in my life and business? Right, right. And I just listen to that a few times That's cool. on repeat. It's about... You know, it's grown into you know, five and a half, six minutes really? now of, of all these things in as much detail as possible yeah, yeah. of what I, I want to get out of this life. That's so cool. Um, so I do that. Then I go into the cold shower. And the cold shower is you know, about <laughs> two and a half months in. Right. And this has been arguably the hardest thing that I do. But you know, again, I was studying mm -hmm. peak performers. You know, yes. you're 
um, Tony Robbins and Joe Rogans and you know, these guys. Yeah. And they all say, when you start your day with something that's just painful, that requires discipline, yeah. any other, you know, Joe Rogan talks about creating your own struggle. Yeah. This is a struggle. Every day I look at, up at the yeah. thing, I'm like, here we go. <laughs> yep, yep, Let's yep. go. And, um, you know, I found that that, again, sets a tone for any other external struggles that come into the day. Mm -hmm. I'm already way ahead of the curve because I'm doing these things that yeah. a lot of people know they should be doing, but doing. aren't doing them because yeah. they are challenging. Right, right. So we go from the cold shower into exercise. You know, I'm seven days a week and yeah. I'm not, you know, beating the hell out of myself all oh, seven sure. days, but yeah. I'm moving all seven days. Yeah, yeah. And movement is also inclusive of recovery, like, right. you know, soft tissue work and uh, all, all of that on gotcha. Sundays typically. So while I'm exercising, I'm also educating myself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, elite mentorship forum, for yeah, example, yeah, yeah. I'm listening to the Peter Sage straight talks yes. while I'm doing all it. So things. habit stacking. Mm -hmm. Before seven o'clock, 7.30 rolls around, my kids wake up and I you know, start getting re them ready for school. Right. I've knocked out five things that most people struggle to do one, one of those things. For like more than a couple of days at a time. Right. I mean, you're doing more in that chunk. How long does that take you start to finish? That takes me about an hour and a half, give or take. But that's not bad. No. That's not a lot of time. No. And like, th like now stacking that over the weeks, months, years will propel you well beyond where you were when you started. For, I'm sure you would agree, right? Otherwise Correct. you wouldn't keep doing it. Nope. So did you, now here's my question is, did you start, you, you said you developed the, the six by six over time, but did you start saying, all right, I'm gonna do these six things? Or was it, hey, I'm gonna start with just meditation? Or I'm gonna start with just exercise, you know, coming out of the fitness realm. That was always there and then you just built from there? Or how, how yeah. did this come about? Yeah, just, just built from there, coming from the fitness realm mm -hmm. where you know, when you're programming for people, if you change yep. or manipulate too many variables at once, if you're asking for, you know, change your uh, diet completely, drink eight uh, bottles of water, right. and that, <laughs> people don't do anything. They you're, fall you're, apart. You're, yeah, you just <laughs> fall apart. Right, right, right. So I, I like to practice what I preach. And again, that's yes. been the evolution here of actually doing the things that I've historically successfully coached people on, but right. I had this imposter syndrome because I wasn't necessarily doing these things yes. myself. So. You know, exercise, to your point, was something that that's just been inherent since I'm 14, 15 years old. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I enjoy it. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Gratefully. Yeah, so. I feel weird if I don't do it. Like, if I don't right. lift some weights, and like, I start getting a little, like, antsy. Yeah, you know? no, yeah. 100%. Gotta make it happen. So, you know, from there, it was, okay, meditation is something that I, I'm reading. 80% of all these, you know, high achievers are doing that on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. I've tried it. I failed. I've tried it. I failed. We're committing to it. It doesn't matter. There is no failure unless you allow there to be failure. Let's quit, right? So, yeah. yeah, I'm just going to keep going. So, you, you know, go. it's been uh, 474 straight days of that. I wow. know that because I'm writing this shit down yeah, no on doubt. a daily basis. No doubt. I mean, you have to, right? Like it's, it's the old, like, what gets measured gets managed or gets done. Precisely. Right? So you have to keep track if you want to even know how far you've come. Yep. For sure. So, I think that's great. So, okay, so you added meditation. And then what was next after that? Cold shower, or is that cold shower is recent? Cold shower we're only on day uh, <laughs> seventy-seven of that. There's a lot uh, of cold showers though. Seventy-seven of them. It's not once has it been fun, or <laughs> if I look forward to it. <laughs> we'll revisit this in like a year and see uh, if anything's changed. Maybe I not. look. I come out in my face and my chest and stomach. Like everything is just. It, it looks like I I got uh, new. Like, beat like red, right? Yeah, yeah, like I just been sitting out in the sun without sunblock for <laughs> seven hours in in Mexico yeah. right, or right, whatever. Right, right, right. Uh, but I feel great, yeah. and it's it's enabled me to reduce and you know in, in large part eliminate something like caffeine, oh, where you crash. This is a more sustainable mm -hmm. energy boost, mental clarity boost, mm -hmm. and again, I just I feel great because I'm disciplined. And you, you you touched on it, but it's progressive. Yes, you know I've noticed that the results in my business, the results in my relationships, mm -hmm. have all accelerated in their quality yes. as I've started to incorporate and stay consistent with all of these disciplines on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, I think too is like, you know, when you give yourself that much, you've got more to give the people. Correct. Right? Rather than coming from sort of an empty cup where you, you're, you're tired, you're stressed out, right? You're, you're feeling weak because you didn't exercise. Get out of that realm and get into a realm where like every morning you've made time for yourself. Now when you go to hang with your kids, you hang with your spouse, you work with clients, you've got so much more to give and you have a lot to teach them because right. you've been doing this and building this for so long. So I think there's an important lesson to be learned there of like two things. One is 
make time for yourself because it's obviously going to help you. But two is, and I, and I like that you said this sort of habit stacking of like, and I tell, I tell this to clients all the time is, don't be a C student at 10 things. Be an A student at like one thing and just get that down. And when you're comfortable with that, then we'll add the next piece. Yep. Um, I actually just started a, a, a new client on a program yesterday and I told them like the first couple of weeks is going to be like weirdly easy. Like you're gonna be like, is this guy serious? <laughs> like what are we doing here? I'm like, but we have to build that foundation. And once we have that, then the, the stuff will come. So yeah. like three, six, nine months from now, it'll look like what you want to look like on day one, but you'll actually be able to do it consistently. Yeah. So I think that, I that's important. And so what would you say, Brett, is like a great place for people to start in terms of like this morning routine? Like I don't think everyone's gonna jump in a cold shower after watching <laughs> this video. They'll probably avoid that one <laughs> yeah. to last. But Keep like, that yeah, further down the put trough it over here. there. But what's, what's a good place for people to start you think has like kind of the most effective um, or like most bang for your buck when you're getting started? I think exercise yeah. personally. Yep. And I just think that moving your body does so many great things for you physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. And as, as that being the foundation of what you do, you're, you're going to be able to build upon that to, to your point. Just yes. nail that with consistency. They, you know, it doesn't always have to be you know, the 90 minute, you right, know, just right. you're, you know, burning you mode, know, 3,000 yeah, right. calories right, type right, right. of, just move, get in the arena day after day after day. Right. And when you prove to yourself that you can do that, that just builds self-esteem, it builds yes. self-trust, it builds self-confidence. Mm -hmm. So you can then add the next thing and yes. the thing after that. And it, it really lends itself to business as well, because historically, totally. you know, especially as an entrepreneur, you have a tendency to want to do all these things at once and elevate everything at once. Right. Pick a singular project or one or two projects, see them through to fruition, and yes. then go on to the next thing. Totally. And I think you made a great point of like, it doesn't so much matter the what, it's just that you're doing it. Yeah. And so a quick, quick side story just to kind of prove the point is, I had a, a friend in high school who, you know, he's like a little chubby, just like I was, you know, whatever. And I think it was between junior and senior year of high school. So went for summer break after junior year, didn't see him all summer, come back in the fall of senior year, and he's like skinny. And we're like, Dude, what, ha what happened to you? And he leaned in real close. I'll never forget this. He goes, dude, DDR. And we're like, what? And he goes, Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> he spent all summer <laughs> playing Dance Dance Revolution for like three hours a day and lost all this weight. And it wasn't the fact that he played the game or the game is that effective or whatever. It was the fact that he was just consistent day after day in his own little way. I'm not going to say I'm going to start playing DDR <laughs> if I want to lose weight. But he picked something, he committed to it, and just stuck with that one like avenue and it got him the results that he wanted. So if, if you're watching this right now and you're wondering like, well, I don't want a cold shower. I think meditation's like not really for me. Just pick something. And I think movement's a great place to start because you could do tons of stuff. You could join a gym, you could join a CrossFit gym, yoga, walking, whatever, but get your body moving. Yeah. Even for a little bit, five, 10 minutes, just anything. Anything at all. And that's a huge point where yeah. people think, all right, I need to have 60 minutes, five times a week. Yeah. No, no, especially with the work from home mm -hmm. uh, end of it. Like just have an alarm go off, get down and do 20 push-ups and 20 yeah, squats. Do something. Then sit back down. Then, you know, again, an hour from now, it, it can be piecemeal and cumulative or it can be just, you know, just a quick hit, 10, right. 15 minutes. They think if you don't have the full hour to commit, then why bother? Right, right. Same thing like diet, you know? Yeah. Oh, I ate a donut this morning, so now I'm going to eat the right, pizza right, right. and the ice cream and everything. No, you had a donut, so you know, go back to the salad for your next yeah, meal. 100%. And, and just to illustrate, like just yesterday, my workout was 14 minutes. Nice. That's all I had time for. So I got down in the basement, did some burpees and kettlebell swings and whatever else, and that was that. But hey, when I left there, I was sweaty and breathing hard, and it was what I needed in that time. And had I not done it, I would have felt way worse than just squeezing in that 14 minutes. So. Brett, I know we're kind of coming up on time here. Is there any last pieces you want folks to kind of take away, um, whether it be the morning routine, the evening reflection, any, anything in between you want to share with them? Yeah, I, I would say the, the journaling out of, out of all of it has been the mm -hmm. biggest catalyst for positive change okay. for me and my clients. Yeah. Because as I mentioned already, the intentionality and that you know, getting yourself off of autopilot right. is tremendous because mm -hmm. When you do that, then you're going to be able to see, okay, I do have time for exercise yes. in the morning. I do want to meditate in the morning. Here's why, here's what it'll do for me, right. so on and so forth. So in the absence of actually looking through what you're doing and why you're doing it, yep. you're, you're not able to create 
your days mm -hmm. and, and your outcomes, which leaves people feeling empty and unfulfilled right. and anxious and all those things. Get it out of your head, get it onto paper, and you're gonna be in a much better position to intentionally create the outcomes that you're looking for in your life and business. I think that's fantastic. And so with that, Brett, I wanna thank you for coming on the show. It was a pleasure having you here. I know Same. I learned a bunch. I hope everybody watching learned a ton. Uh, where can they find you? Where, where can we tell folks to get a hold of you? Yeah, sure. So uh, you can find me uh, at my website, uh, https uh, slash slash yeah. nofno solutions. Last name there. I, I like to take a solution based approach to everything. Uh, beyond that, I just wrote my first book. Uh, you can find me on Amazon, Everyday People, Extraordinary Sales Success. And, you know, other than that, you know, find me on social media, uh, Brett Knopf, LinkedIn, at Knopf Knows, Instagram, all, all the things. Smoke signal, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, whatever. Messenger pigeon, whatever. Whatever, you got. whatever needs to be done. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always happy to have conversations and help where I'm uh, capable of helping. Fantastic, awesome, thank you. And, and as always, folks, you can head over to resultswithjoe.com. We're gonna have Brett featured there as well with his info so you can get a hold of him if you didn't catch all that. And we will see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.